Hello, hello, and welcome to live on Jamaicans.com. Welcome to live on My Temple Wellness. My name is Deborah Johnson, and I am uh, here this evening to talk to you about the struggles uh, that someone might have should they um, end up with a kidney issue. And I have actually a special guest coming out here today. She is um, getting ready to jump on with us very shortly. Um, I do want to do a few housekeeping things as well before we do that. Um, so let's do that right now. So guys, as you're coming in, let me know where you are coming in from. All right. Again, my name is Deborah Johnson. I'm a nutritionist, plant-based nutritionist, and I do um, quite a bit when it comes to nutrition and wellness. My services are for individuals and organizations. Um, so let me just uh, handle something real quick here. Um, okay. We're just waiting real quick on our guest to jump in here. Um, in the meantime, let me go ahead and just do a few housekeeping things, as I said before. So again, uh, Deborah Johnson here, this is uh, a show that we're going to be talking about kidney issues. We're going to be speaking with someone who actually works with kidney issues, someone who has kidney issues. And I'm going to just go ahead and go over just a little bit about her. So her name is Sophia Murphy. She's a regular here on Jamaicans.com uh, and she's amazing. So her work is extensive when it comes to folks within um, this field. Welcome, Karina. Uh, welcome, Natalie. I'll say hi to a few of you guys. Mr. Tony Kelly. Hi. Good to see you guys. Bronx in the house. Scotland in the house. Um, and uh, this is Tony Kelly, who I know is in Birmingham. Yeah, guys, so definitely put where you are watching from. Would love to see um, where and where people are looking at us from here today. All right, so I'm, hang on a second. <laughs> guys, a little technical difficulties right here. I'm trying to get my guest in. So just bear with me as I get her in here, okay? Um, Let's just see if she can come on in. So let me read a little bit about uh, Sophia before we get started. All right, another UK, Christine. So she has been, Sophia Murphy has been working uh, in banking for about 10 years. And she actually switched over to doing care for patients uh, for 15 years. So she, she worked first 10 years in banking and then uh, decided to switch over to work with elderly patients, specifically people who are uh, having issues in Alzheimer's, diabetes, Parkinson disease, and of course, kidney failure, among other conditions and ailments. So uh, she did two bank acquisitions, and after that, she decided she wanted to fully focus on elderly care and holistic approaches to healing. And so she's like a wellness warrior, guys, all right? So she's really... Um, uh, someone that I want you to hear from, again, just waiting to see how to get her in here. I'm not sure what's happening here. If you just give me a second, I'm going to um, make sure that we can get her in here. Beverly, watching from Maryland. Technical difficulties, guys. I'm waiting on my guest. <laughs> um, hang on a second. We're working on it, working on it, working on it. Let me, uh... um, send the link again. So guys, how are you all doing? I know. <laughs> how is everybody doing today? What did you guys do? It's Monday, Meatless Monday, right? What do you guys, what did you have for Sunday dinner? Let's send the link again. Hopefully we can um, get her on. Okay.
Okay, in the meantime, I'm going to have you guys watch a video on just a recap on kidney, okay? So just give me a second here. Okay, and for those of you who are here right now, please follow. If you are not already following, please follow on Jamaicans. Uh, follow my page at mytemplewellness.com. Um, okay, so we're we're working it out here with her. Okay, let me do this. <laughs> Hang in there with us, guys. <laughs> I appreciate your patience. Tell me, tell me more. Tell me what you guys did over the weekend. I'm waiting for some comments on what you guys did over the weekend. Um, let's see here. Hold on a second, guys. So fever, cough, and shortness of breath are the main symptoms. Cough. Okay. So let's talk about the old to launch your online course. So the first thing I want you to know is that Okay. All right, we have her. <laughs> Hello. Hi, Miss Sophia. Hello, hello. I oh, apologize for the delay. Oh, no problem. Everybody understand, right? <laughs> hello. Um, okay, so as we are here, hello, hello. we're having a delay. Oh, no problem, everybody. Hello. Um, okay, so as we are here, if you're on FB, it's going to come up with an echo. You don't have to go back to Facebook if you are on Facebook. Can you hear me now? Okay. Perfect. Yes, I can hear you. Awesome. Okay. <laughs> there we go. All right, guys. So we're in business. <laughs> Finally. So, Sophia, how are you doing today? I'm doing well. I do apologize. It was so hot outside. I had to run in and <laughs> come in the room. So sorry, guys. Oh, you're fine. It's okay. Everybody here is understandable. Um, so, Sophia, why don't you first go ahead and just tell us a little bit about yourself before we get started. Sure. My name is Sophia Murray, known as the Wellness Warrior, Sophia. And um, I started out in banking with, um, you know, elderly care in my back pocket, so to speak. Mm -hmm. And, um, you know, I haven't gone through various ac acquisitions with banks. Mm -hmm. I decided to, you know, full time into um, elder care. So mm -hmm. here I am working with uh, diverse um, ailments with different um, patients, some with Alzheimer's, Parkinson's, um, kidney disease, which great topic for this month. Yes. So um, <laughs> here to just talk a little bit about that. Yeah, no, that's good. Thank you. So obviously you love this profession. And I know we talked earlier um, a couple of days ago and you shared with me that you really care about your patients and 
Uh, unfortunately, you're sometimes dealing with the patients when they are at the end of life. Um, what is that like for you? How, how do you bring yourself to, you know, that's a, that's a tough thing to have to do. Oh, absolutely. That is the worst part. Mm. But, you know, building a bond with the person, um, mm. try to give them comfort at right. this end stage is okay. what brings me that joy. Okay. And, um, you know, it, it's a pity that you're not able to get a hold of the client prior to the illness mm -hmm. because it is pretty much preventable. Right. But at the end, it's it's really, really challenging. Right. So talk to us. What what does that look like? Um, and care with, okay. a kidney, with someone who's dealing with kidney patient. And when you say towards the end, like how long, let's say you inherit a patient at, they just got dialysis, they just started on dialysis. How long after that in general, do you think that that person um, Last. passes on? Yeah. Okay, it is hard because you know, that depends on the higher power. However, um, you know, a lot of restrictions in terms of diet, Mm -hmm. uh, someone might even end up going to dialysis three times a week, and that would entail anywhere from three to four hours per session, which is, you know, three times a week. Okay. And that is that is hard because they have to be sitting on this chair uh, right. in a very uncomfortable position. And now with COVID, they're wearing masks all the time. Um, and it, it's no fun at all. You know, they cannot mm -hmm. eat. They're just sitting there. They have issues with elevated blood pressure or sometimes it even go down really, really low. Wow. And um, many times, you know, some patients are not able to breathe. You have to call in, um, you know, the emergency to come in and sometimes take them to the hospital. Wow. Yes. And, um, you know, restricted in that with diet also mm -hmm. because you're not able to eat everything that we normally eat. Right. So as I said, you know, getting them prior to the illness Mm -hmm. Or, it, well, it has different stages. So you want right. to get to someone before they get to the end stage. Because prior to that, you can help them with dieting and, you know, maintain where they are and not really decline. Right, right. Um, and so what end stage is stage three and three through five? Or is that for, what, what what's considered end stage? Um, well, end stage is when there's nothing that they can, you can do for that person. It's just dialysis. Right. All right. right. And um, the diet, that's the thing that I'm going to say over and <laughs> over, and over yeah. because that is the, the kicker in all of this. So end stage could go up just to five, mm -hmm. if I'm not um, mistaken. Yes. And yes. at that stage, um, you know, you find a lot of depression, too, because some people are like they know what's going on. Right. right? That mm -hmm. this could be the end. And mm -hmm. um, at that particular point, it, it, it is. It is really, really hard. Yeah. So what are um, some things, you know, and we, we could delve deeper. We're talking about diet. What are some of the things that folks could do for those people who are watching who might have a family member who's experiencing this? Um, we talked about diet last week. I did some recipes. I shared some recipes and stuff like that. What, what does a diet typically look like for, let's say, your client from morning till if you want to take us through sort of like you know, is your client having, what are they having in the morning, you know, um, straight through? Okay. The diet um, is pretty restricted in that they have a certain amount of liquid that they have to consume per day. Okay. And many patients, they don't go to the bathroom for number one. You know what that is. Right. And um, many of them are constipated, which is not a good thing also. You know, the buildup of, uh, you know, in the colon, it's not good. Right. Mm -hmm. That we can't do much for that because the restriction again they they're not able to eat everything so maybe you know particularly my client he would eat more proteins right because you have to maintain that that's a very important right. um, part of the the treatment also right so he would eat maybe three eggs or four eggs um okay. maybe six ounces of coffee two ounces of water okay. you know very restricted Okay. For lunch, he wants to monitor what he's eating. Again, very restricted. Um, right. He cannot eat like beans that we would normally eat. Okay. Um, eat, you know, like, well, they can eat broccoli, mm -hmm. um, carrots, uh, mm, no baked beans, no beans, no beans. Wow. Certain fish they're not able to eat. Okay. Um, it's 
certain even uh, ketchup, you would put, you know, certain seasoning that you would put on your, your meat. They're not able to have that. They can have like garlic, onions, lots of onions they can have. So vegetables, lots of vegetables. Yes. Mm -hmm. and is it because the body, I mean, we, we sort of know the answer to this, but you can still, mm -hmm. you know, share. I want you to share from your experience. Mm -hmm. um, is it because the body's just not able to really, at this stage, really handle? Break it down. That processed is foods. That is correct. Because the kidney is in a very compromised state. So right. you'll be putting more work on it by giving the body that. And, you right. know, certain uh, foods that they get is high in potassium, which that does not help. So right. they have to be so very careful and, um, you know, dealing with someone prior to someone who has maybe like a high blood pressure condition, mm -hmm. you might want to monitor that because after time on medication, that's going to translate into some kidney issues or even heart issues. Mm -hmm. So, you know, once you go to the doctor, you get a full workup and they go through the blood work with you and you know where you are. That's mm -hmm. the time if you're anywhere near in um, maybe stage one or whatever, you want to really do something about it. You yeah. don't have time because it just goes like that. And when you're at the end, it's it's depression and right. ultimately right. death. Right. And of course, who wants to be, you know, on a machine three times a week for three to four hours? Right. That's no fun. No That's life. a difficult thing to have to, because normally you know, it's a hospital that they have to go to, right? And then this inconvenience of leaving their home, whether they are able to drive or not, getting in a mm -hmm. vehicle, getting to this location, sitting there for an hour, right? It's usually about an hour or two that they have to do the dialysis. No, or three, three minimum, hours. minimum three hours. And right. if so certain people hours. are not eating properly and their levels are really, really elevated, you mm -hmm. could be there for four and a half hours. Okay. And they have renal centers. You'll see a lot of them popping up now. And mm -hmm. that's something we need to pay attention to. All mm -hmm. right. Mm -hmm. A lot the 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 uh, medications that they give you, you don't release them out of your body. So they stay in your body and it translates, you know, trickles into the kidneys. Right. Yeah, because the kidney is it's a de it detoxes the body along with the liver. It gets rid of all the toxins in the body, and that's mm -hmm. one of the things that we've been trying to um emphasize is not only is it the uh, medications, but sometimes the over-the-counter stuff, right? So right. Like Tylenol and, and, and Advil and Aleve and all of those things also impact the kidney. Oh, so, absolutely. Yeah. So folks sometimes think, oh, if it's not an actual prescription, it's not going to be a problem. I can just pop an, a, an Advil whenever, you know, it's kind of like deal with the root cause, right? Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. We emphasize it, it that. It doesn't work like that, which is, mm -hmm. you know, it is so unfortunate because mm -hmm. as I said, it's preventable. Anyone mm -hmm. suffering from diabetes, you got to mm -hmm. watch your levels. You got to, mm -hmm. most of these illnesses are at the end of your fork. So mm -hmm. whatever you're putting yeah. in your mouth is going to translate and it sits in mm -hmm. the stomach. And once it's there, it doesn't go anywhere. Right. You know, so, right. and right. us, our people, we really <laughs> struggle with that. So, let's talk about that, Sophia. <laughs> our people, what do you mean by that? Our people. Well, you know, <laughs> Caribbean folks. Yes. Um, I want to talk about it. <laughs> Tell us. <laughs> What's your observation? Do you, do you, do you think <laughs> that our um, Caribbean people were more kind of stubborn when it comes to like making these changes because we love with oxtail and stuff like that. Oh, absolutely. And not only that, there's lack of education in our community. This is So true. that causes a problem. You know, growing up in the island, sometimes someone is sick. We mm -hmm. don't know what they're challenged with. Being here in America, we now we get to see the broader picture, you That's know, true. because then we could say, oh, this is what it is and we can do this, that, that. But mm -hmm. we don't know for lack of you know knowledge, lack of education, but being here, you're you're exposed to that much more. Yeah, and you do have that opportunity to make a change. Yeah, no, I totally agree. We definitely have more opportunities to um, not only get knowledge but get resources. There's mm -hmm. a lot more resources here, I think, in the states than we have in Jamaica. I mean, for me, um, my personal story, I lost a lot of family members from diabetes. Mm -hmm. Um, and quite frankly, diabetes is, and then someone just said it, Dion just mentioned that, um, that it's a lifestyle disease. It's a lifestyle disease. Absolutely. Yeah. It yeah. means that, you know, if you can adjust your diet, which you're saying that Sophia, mm -hmm. adjust your diet, 
um, and monitor what's on your fork, you will yep. prevent the hypertension, the heart disease, you know, um, some cancers even, right? right? Not everything is just from your genes. You inherit certain things from your genes, but then what's on the end of your fork is really what exactly. what happens, you know, mm -hmm. later on. Um, so we had talked about people in their 30s and 40s. You mentioned that you have even seen folks, younger folks. It's not just oh, older. absolutely. Can we talk a little bit about the age range? Because I know you're working with elderly folks right now, but mm -hmm. do you think that people that are younger, we know that they do, but like, could you share a little bit what your observation has been with folks who are in their 30s, 40s, 50s? Okay, the experience is that um, some people that age group, they're diabetic. And right. once you're diabetic, right. somehow it trickles into kidney disease. So right. it, it the age has nothing to do with it. It's just okay. that if you're challenged with a particular illness, Good. you mm -hmm. can almost you know follow on that it's going to be into your kidneys because that's mm -hmm. where everything ends up. Right, right, and that's because of all the medicine and all the wear right. and tear on the body. Right, right, mm -hmm. right. Um, and hypertension as well. So a lot of salt. Absolutely. We like salt. <laughs> What could we do to 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 minimize the amount of salt? I mean, I know the processed foods. We've talked about that on this show many times. Minimize the amount of processed foods that um, someone's eating. Do, do you think, for example, with the clients that you've had, are they completely off of processed foods? Do they have to literally stop eating all processed foods at that stage? Yes, they should, but they don't. Even at that stage, they're like, you know what? This is where I'm at. I'm going to do it. So if we can get them when they're younger and just at the beginning stage, then if they're open to it, they can make a change. I would say to my client, I would be, you know, why did you allow it to get this way? And he, he's like, okay, maybe he was thinking, not maybe, he said he thought he had time, but oh. it just goes so quickly. And mm -hmm. you do get a little break to make mm -hmm. that change. And, mm -hmm. you know, we have to do it. We have to. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I definitely think that we are prone to, and I hear a lot of people say this as a nutritionist, people say, I'm just going to, you know, it's just one plate. It's not going to, but that adds up over time. If you're Absolutely. eating a same meal week after week after week, it's impacting your health. It's impacting mm -hmm. your body and there's no two ways around it. Um, okay. So, so diabetes, hypertension, those are the two main risk factors that yes. play into it. Are there anything, is there anything else that folks um, should look out for other than those two um, illnesses? What else um, do you think play a role in someone having kidney issues? Pretty much anything, because once you're going to be on medication, it's mm -hmm. going to end up in your kidneys. So you want to stay away from every condition possible. Mm -hmm. Try to eat better. It is, more, it is cheaper to eat better. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. to eat cleaner it is better mm -hmm. we don't need all the food that we were raised on we mm -hmm. really don't need it mm -hmm. you know more fruits and vegetables is mm -hmm. better lots of water important mm -hmm. that is such a limit also with someone you know dealing with kidney disease mm -hmm. and a person um can find out about where they are by by going to their doctor and getting an annual mm -hmm. how important yes. is that do you think it's it's critical for us to, and at what stage or what age do you think it's important for us to go getting physical? Do you think someone in their 30s shouldn't go get physical because they, they're okay? Or what's your thoughts on that? Because some people think, oh, I'm, I'm young. I don't need to go get physical <laughs> right now. It, it's not a matter of being okay because we have seen people who are slender in body type mm. and they're diabetic. So mm -hmm. it's not because of your size, you're gonna be like, oh, you know, I'm diabetic. Not necessarily because as mm -hmm. I said earlier, that's on the end of your fork. Mm -hmm. So it could be from mm -hmm. any age group, even in their 20s, you've yeah. seen people on dialysis and it's what they're putting in their bodies. So if we can get them at that stage, we can mm -hmm. work with them. Mm -hmm. I mean, it's sad to see it. It, it is really heartbreaking then yeah. to see that, you know? Yeah. Yeah, so what are some of your um, recommendations for people? Um, I know you're saying the fork, watch what you're eating. Um, this is a show we focus on nutrition, but you right. know, um, speak on anything else that you think folks might need to know. And um, even as you, you had mentioned, sorry, even as you had mentioned getting that annual checkup and go right. through, let the doctor go through every, uh, you know, information on that paper, everything mm -hmm. that he tested for, make mm -hmm. sure you understand there are different mm -hmm. ranges on there. You mm -hmm. can see how close you are. 
there's a mm-hmm. reason why there's the range. And mm-hmm. if you're getting too close to it, you can make a change. Yes. You know, sometimes the, the, the doctors themselves, they deal with so much drugs that that's what they're going to give you. But we know mm-hmm. once you do fresh air, lots of fruits, lots of vegetables, you know, keeping your thoughts clean and clear, you mm-hmm. know, meditating, you know, whatever practice it is, but, you know, make that change mm-hmm. because we don't need all that processed food. We really don't. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. And we have heard um, Dion Journey saying, um, find exercise to suit your lifestyle, that right? Is correct. That is yeah. Correct. So do you, do you find that exercise help your patient or are they doing exercise? Oh, absolutely. absolutely. Okay. Because I'm in South Florida and we have the sun and I mean, <laughs> who doesn't need some vitamin D, right? Yes. So walking, just getting a little bit of fresh air, that is mm-hmm. good. There's mm-hmm. limitations, of course, depending on the person's ability to move. That's so great. you go with the flow. Whatever they're able to do, that's what you do. Mm-hmm. You know, I have him riding a mobile bike, stationary bike. He sits and he rides it and okay. he enjoys it. So he's building up muscles. I okay. give him weights and he's lifting them and, you know, doing Oh, his- that's good. So, oh, that's yes. nice. <laughs> oh, yeah. And, you know, you encourage him. Mm-hmm. Okay. So folks are asking about um, herbal tea recommendations. So guys, who are for all of you who are listening out there, please ask your questions. We have an uh, expert here, caregiver. She can, yes, expert. <laughs> she's expert. She's She's been working with patients, so she understands. So if you have questions, now is the time. Um, we're going to stay on for a few more minutes because we were a little bit delayed. So if you guys have some more questions or any comments that you want to share while you are here, there's quite a few um, people out here. So please ask questions of Sophia of me will be happy to um, help um, in my in terms of my input in terms of herbal tea and then uh, Sophia you can chime in if you like uh, I would suggest teas like uh, that are not caf- that does not have caffeine would be the ones that I would um, suggest but again if the person has uh, kidney disease and they would really need to speak to their doctor that would be my first thing you'd need to speak to your doctor first before you start drinking teas because some teas mm-hmm. That I have in my house, they're diuretics, they're right. <laughs> dandelion tea, you know. So, a lot of these teas um, have all different types of um, benefits to them. So, you know, I would really suggest actually speaking to your doctor before um, I start listing teas <laughs> for mm-hmm. you guys here today, mm-hmm. especially for kidney patients. But there are teas that you can have as a person who's healthy that can help with detoxifying the body and mm-hmm. dandelion tea is one of my favorites that i like to use um and yes. you can eat dandelion root which is a mm-hmm. vegetable i have it in my refrigerator right now it's very bitter <laughs> it's the most bitter uh vegetable if you just eat it raw or or steam it right um but dandelion has some good properties to help detox the body so Sophia, Absolutely. i don't know if you want to share so i'll you- get back on that with the dandelion mm-hmm. because i have a concoction that i make so oh. I love the juice. So <laughs> I love green stuff. So okay. for that, I would um, juice oh, some dandelion tea, mm-hmm. the herb itself, mm-hmm. and with some lemon because the lemon cuts the taste. It's really go. not so pleasant, okay? Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Pop a few green apples in there. Yes. A little bit of water, mm-hmm. and it's an amazing drink after. Mm-hmm. That mm-hmm. helps to detox, you know, keep things going. But that's before you're on the you know, dialysis machine. Of course. You take care before. So, yes. you know, that would be something. Yeah, preventative care um, mm-hmm. is what we're really trying to emphasize with you guys today. It's preventative care, and that's what Sophia has been preaching. Yes. Try to get to it before, guys, so that you don't end up on a situation where you'll need someone like Sophia to come into your home to care for you, right? Um, can kidney stone cause pain in the legs and toes? Um, that's a great question. I'm not sure. Um, if you can have, I know that edema is the swelling in your legs that you can have as a result of having kidney issues. Pain, I'm not sure. I would definitely recommend you go see a doctor if that happens to be your issue, so- Sonia, or if there's someone that you, if you're asking on behalf of someone, that's something where you need to see your doctor. Sophia, you have any input on that? If it's neuropathy, is the person diabetic? I mean, can okay. kidney stones? I, I, you know, that's a doctor question for sure. Yeah, Sonia, let, let us know and, and we'll see what we can do. If not, you know, um, definitely see your doctor. What are your thoughts on iron fluorine? For a dialysis patient, Dion? Yeah, let us know, Dion, what you're referring to. Dr. Roger Ball. Hey, Doc, what's up? That's my good friend. 
Hi, Dr. Bull. <laughs> Maybe we'll have him on one day, guys. He's a great person to have on one of these days. We'll, we'll talk about that another time. Uh, Sonia, um, can teas help kidney stones? Again, in terms of the teas, we don't want to necessarily recommend any particular teas here today. Um, if you're an otherwise healthy person and you're concerned for kidney stones, I mean, kidney stones are forming as a result of too much buildup in the body. So the goal would be to drink your water, you know, right? Enjoy your lemon and go ahead, Sophia. So, Sophia. Yeah, flush, 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 eliminate. Flush, exactly. You want to keep the body, <laughs> yeah, drink as much um, water and that's if you're healthy, water and so forth. Because even water matters if you have a kidney issue, right? Right. You oh, yes. Yeah. There's a water. limit on that. Absolutely. Right. Right. Um, and then short says, so can I know if I have, I'm sorry, that's an unfinished question. So let us know what you were trying to say there. Um, thank you. Looking out for prevent preventative care. Lots of dandelion bush. Yeah, that we were saying that. Um, so and, and Claudette, I'm sorry, Claudette, limitation to everything. You don't want to overdo it. Yes. <laughs> All right. You don't want to overdo it. Then that would defeat the purpose. Definitely. Thank you for, for jumping in on that. So Sonia is saying that, yes, she is diabetic and I yeah, forgot the question. So mm -hmm. it's, it's more neuropathy than that she's dealing with. Okay, okay. That, that's sometimes, you know, hard to deal with, sometimes hard to treat. They mm -hmm. would say there's no treatment for that, but, you know, we can't discuss everything here. <laughs> right, <laughs> that is true. Yeah, guys, this is um, this show is really informational purposes only, so mm -hmm. make sure that, you know, you're consulting your doctor um, in conjunction with what we're sharing here, it's really for you to get the knowledge, but also still do some research because, you know, um, we're trying to give you as much as we know um, right now. And Short says, is there any sentence that will show you if you have kidney problems? Yeah, um, the symptoms, some of the symptoms, um, you want to share that? <laughs> I mean, I can I can say one. Um, for mm -hmm. example, if you um, uh, maybe urine in a clear bottle, put it in the fridge overnight. Oh. And um, you know, in the morning you'll pour it out. Okay. And if there's a ring around it that formed from where the urine was, you know, you got some kidney issues going on there. Yeah. Some of the um symptoms that I would also rec uh, suggest that you look out for is increase, you know, increase urine. So constant going to the restroom, that's one of mm -hmm. them. Um swelling in the legs, sometimes also lots of headache. Mm -hmm. Um, there were, there's quite a few others that I'll list afterwards, but you know, a lot of the things that we'll say here today, that's a very good one that you just mentioned. Cause that's like, um, specific if there's too much protein in the urine, right? So mm -hmm. there, um, albumin is a protein that comes out of our body. Right. But if you have too much of that, normally just a small amount comes out, but if too much of that comes out and that's probably what's forming that ring, um, and what you were saying. Um, you'll see a lot of froth in your urine. When you're right. using the bathroom, there'll be just excess amount of froth in the urine, frothiness. So that's something to look out for, um, short trending down G5. <laughs> I like that. Um, among other things, but I will share um, some more symptoms and things that you can look for, but not everything that, you know, that are symptoms, it could be reflective of something else. And so that's why if you feel that you're having um, any type of kidney issues, you should check with your doctor. But what, Sophie has been saying here and that what I've said before as well is you a regular checkup at your doctor, right? Annual physical, just going mm -hmm. to the physical and having them run your blood and asking for the GFR number. Exactly. The GFR number is what's going to really tell whether you're at even stage one. So mm -hmm. that would be our best recommendation today, right, Sophia, is to see Absolutely. get that blood test. It's a simple blood test. Um, and they could also do a urine test as well. So there's two ways for them to find out when you see the doctor at mm -hmm. home, self-diagnosing yourself, Googling things. I mean, we're all famous for doing that, but you want to be sure because kidney issue, as Sophia's pointing out here, is a real issue. So no you can just take a chance and say, oh, I think, or maybe I, I you know, ask your doctor, get mm -hmm. the blood test or the urine test. Those are two ways that they can find out. And again, keep tracking on your, your health. So you know, know your numbers, get mm -hmm. like print out of everything. I have access online with my, my hospital, the doctor that I go to, I have mm -hmm. access to log on online. I have it on my phone. It's on my computer. So at any time, if I go for a test or anything like that, I can actually access it myself and ask the question of the doctor. You know, um, Sophia mentioned that before, ask questions. Don't, um, don't be quick to 
um, assume that they're telling you everything. It's really good mm -hmm. for you to really ask. Um, know your numbers. Know your numbers, yeah. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so iron, iron for anyone, especially persons who have any form of, is it is plant-based iron. Um, yeah, it's hard again. For me, I won't recommend um, you just to take, Oh, okay. I think I'm familiar with this this iron that you're referring to. It's iron. It's a. Is it liquid? Is it a liquid iron that you're referring to? Iron fluorine. Um. So you have to know why you're taking any any type of supplements, right? So is there a reason that you're taking this iron fluorine? What is the reason? Are you iron deficient? Right. I'm, trying to, I'm trying to understand. Are you iron deficient? Because I'm. I used to be iron deficient, and my doctor actually recommended how much iron I should take. Mm -hmm. And so that's what I did until I got my iron levels up. Once I got my iron levels up, I no longer needed to take that. I just enjoyed foods like kale, lots of iron rich foods. Right. Um, because excess iron in the body actually can cause an issue. So um, you wanna be keen on that as well. I don't know if you wanna add anything. I, I agree. Again, know your numbers. It, yeah. it, it does not hurt guys. You can do your physical once a year. Mm -hmm. know your numbers you'll know exactly where you are and mm -hmm. you feel different in your body it's okay to go have it checked yes that's yes. the chance you have now to do something about it don't let it go and then you know you end up on dialysis or even something worse right and i know that um i just want to encourage all of you as sophia is saying out here um that you know now I know that people have been locked away for some time and we haven't gone to see our doctors. I recently went and saw my doctor. Um, it was like, I literally back to back <laughs> at appointments back to back. So it's good just to go, you know, get your mm -hmm. mask, get outside and go see your doctor. Cause a lot of people have just been at home eating, eating the wrong foods, yeah. self-medicating with all sorts of, you know, junk food because we're depressed. Some of us we're stressed out. We have a lot going on. We have anxiety, right? The list goes on. Um, and so it's important for us to get back out, get that physical. If you haven't had one in two years, cause you know, outside it or closed since 2020 outside have been closed, right? Mm -hmm. so if you didn't go in 2019 and then you didn't go in 2020 and now it's 2021. Highly recommend you go check your doctor, you know, just go get a physical. I haven't been to the doctor in two years. Can I just get a, my, my annual? Um, even if you have to wait two months to get it, just get it on your calendar. Schedule it. Yeah, just schedule it. Uh, and as we're saying here, um, you know, check your numbers so that you can you can relax. <laughs> you don't have to worry about your health because that's one of the biggest things I think people worry about, right? Is am I healthy? Is something wrong? You know. Um, and so. you can tell if something is going on. You know your body. Yeah. You know your body, um, yeah. and especially too if you're not eating home cooked meals. If you're doing fast food, you're on the go, you're not drinking enough water, you're not exercising, mm -hmm. you know, you're stressed, you're building up, you know, stuff in the body, which you want to go have checked out. So yeah. once a year, it's not going to hurt. You'll yeah. you save your life. Yeah. Just ask for the baby needle. <laughs> <laughs> because I'm afraid of the needle and my sister's a nurse and she's like, just tell them to use the baby needle to take mm -hmm. the blood. Because that's what it is. Sometimes people fear to get joke with a pin. Not the pin, but the needle. <laughs> I'm afraid and I donate. That's what I'm afraid. So, oh, yes, I do. I donate, but I'm afraid of the needle. So, oh, my God. Go <laughs> yeah, but, you know, for health, it's it's a small price to pay, mm -hmm. right? To mm -hmm. get whatever you need to. And a lot of people, I think they have fear around going to the doctor because it's just like, I don't want to know. Mm -hmm. But sometimes it's at a, such an early stage that you know and it won't you know, make a difference. You literally be able to fix it in two weeks or a month or something like that versus like you're saying end stage where you cannot yeah. do it because we did talk about this is, is, and I'll just ask you the question and you can, you can just um, let people know, is it reversible um, mm -hmm. at a certain stage? Can we reverse? You heard it guys. No. <laughs> so can you rather just do this? Yeah. <laughs> kidney disease at end stages is not reversible. There's nothing you can do at that no. stage. You cannot start now eating plants to, you know, correct it. Because a lot of people, once things go a certain stage, I think people think, okay, now I'm just going to start going on a plant-based diet once they tell me something is, you know, officially wrong. But now, and it's not that you need to switch to a plant-based diet even now. If, if you know, it's just moderate the amount of meat you're having, the red meat, moderate the amount of processed foods you're having, mm -hmm. um, you know, cause those are the things that affect the kidneys, right? The processed right. food, 
too much red meat, too mm -hmm. much dairy, right? We've gone over those things. Mm -hmm. um, and as you are saying here, sometimes too much potassium, but right, you know, and too much sodium. And again, if you have a hypertension and diabetes, those are the mm -hmm. two main risk factors mm -hmm. that really can tell you if a person, and it's not a must that a person who's type two or who is um, diabetic end up in that stage. If you're caring for yourself and you're type two diabetic, chances are you might be able to avoid it, but absolutely you have diabetes absolutely. for 20 years, 30 years, unfortunately your kidney is being damaged that entire mm -hmm. time, right? So the goal is to, um, let's see if we have any more comments here, if you wanna um, check that. So <laughs> getting your checkup should be a priority. We should know what's going on in, in in our bodies, in your bodies. Yes, yeah, correct. That's correct. Absolutely. Correct. <laughs> Thank you, Eric. <laughs> and, and one more thing, I'm sorry. Um, you know, after dialysis, mm -hmm. the patient is very tired. Mm. So they would come home and maybe have a light lunch and they'll mm -hmm. be in bed for another three, two to three hours maybe. Because wow. you're drained, it's a process. They're mm -hmm. filtering that blood. And you know, what would maybe um, drive this home more? Mm -hmm. If yeah. one of you guys would go actually to a renal center mm. and see how it's done, it, it's no fun. Yeah. They have to put a fistula in the arm and, you know, each time you go, they have to stick you in that area wow. and it, 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 it's no fun. Yeah. Yeah. I definitely think it makes a difference. Like you said, to visit, I've, I've had to, in my profession, mm -hmm. I've had to go to heart centers and, you know, you're in the hospital visiting, seeing different mm -hmm. things. For your as you're learning you have right. to get exposed and so when you do like you're saying go to the renal care center yeah. or you go to the heart um you know the heart center and you're you're observing mm -hmm. the patients that are there it really um makes a difference in how you want to show for yourself you straight. And your family. <laughs> it, it scares you straight and um, that's always something good to do even with our kids you know we got to teach them from young as mm -hmm. ourselves we also have to be the example Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Right? No, I agree 100. And wealth is the true wealth. Yes. yes you got that. <laughs> Sounds so like a nightmare. Like <laughs> <laughs> it is. It is. It's no fun. Yeah. That's why I wanted to have you come on, Sophia, to really share with folks because it's kidney month and we've been talking about it. I've been hammering it home. That's my mm -hmm. new goal is to focus on one thing every month and really hammer it home. And I've, mm -hmm. I really do hope that folks who have been watching us here on Jamaicans.com and My Temple Wellness um, really have a good perspective now that we've we've been in the kitchen talking about kidney. We cooked last week. We made some nice um, pancake or fritters, whatever you want to call them. We made some fritters. color fritters. fritters. <laughs> Jamaicans, we say everything different. We make, we, we fix, we change every word. Mm -hmm. <laughs> um, but yeah, in all seriousness, guys, we, we've been hammering this home and that's why I thought it was really important. And I'm so grateful to you, Sophia, for coming Thank out you. today. Um, we're going to wrap in a few minutes. To One more thing. Let me interrupt. I'm sorry. Go ahead. Go ahead. My, my client, I talk about Escovich fish, you know, Jamaicans, we like Escovich mm -hmm. and he wants it, but oh. guess what? He cannot eat the fish. Because he's restricted to the types of fish that he eats. So wow. go figure. Wow. That's really no fun. And as Carrie mm -hmm. says, it is absolutely a nightmare. Mm -hmm. I want to share that part of my culture, but I'm not able to because he wow. cannot do it. Wow. Little things we take for granted that we eat because we're healthy, they mm -hmm. cannot eat it. Mm -hmm. So, you know, before it gets there, guys, please, please take care of your bodies. Yeah. Careful what you put in your mouth. Yeah. Right? Yeah, because uh, I forgot who said it. Someone said it early earlier um, that the body remembers. Mm -hmm. um, Dion, yeah, she said that the body keeps score. Yeah, and we've we've said that here before. The body keeps score. It's not gonna forget that you had a pint, a whole um, you know gallon of ice cream, mm -hmm. and then you drank two liter bottle of soda because that's another thing that causes issues in the kidney, right? Excess sugar. Except mm -hmm. um, caffeine from not just caffeine, but all the toxic stuff that's found mm -hmm. in beverages. Um, the body is remembering everything. And so it's not going to forget. And you're wearing and tearing. Once again, the kidney is used to clean the body. The amount of junk, and I hate to use that word, but the amount of junk you put in your body, it's, it still has to detox. It has to go through it. 
There's yeah. no other way for it to go. It's not mm -hmm. just go straight because it goes in your urine, right? Right. So it's it's detoxing the blood. It's cleaning the blood, right? Your blood um, is needed. <laughs> you need your blood to function, right? You need it to pump your heart. You need it to do all these. You need it to stay alive, guys. Yeah. So the kidney, all the organs, we're focusing on the kidney now, but all the organs within the body require um that we care for them and we'll and care. over next year next month we'll go into the liver mm -hmm. but the kidneys are extremely extremely important um and i really want you all to really um take this all very seriously we're probably going to just round out the hour um and take more questions because i think you guys all have a few more questions um author um andrean says it's helpful oh of course yeah, it's our pleasure, right, Sophia? Oh, absolutely. <laughs> and you know, guys, why can't they eat fish? Because of the potassium, right? Mm -hmm. And also, um, bananas that we love, yes. ripe bananas, they cannot eat ripe banana. Yes. They're restricted to, to certain fruits. They can eat like apple, pears, uh, strawberries, berries. They can eat a lot of berries. But yeah. who wants to be restricted? Right. right? You want to have fun. So right. we don't need the artificial things. Right, right. right. No, it's true. Um, yeah, potassium, phosphorus, calcium, mm -hmm. sodium, right? Lo these mm -hmm. are some of the things that kidney patients have to look out for. So everything that you're eating, you have to look to see if it has potassium, especially if you're eating the processed food. Right. And one thing I mentioned last week, the packaging of the processed food don't always tell you that it has potassium in there, right? So you may be reading a label and say, oh, it doesn't have potassium. It does, because you're going to look for... Um, let's say even for phosphorus, phosphate, right? you're gonna have to know how to read scientific words so you can decide whether or not it has phosphorus or if it has potassium. Um, so that's why I say stay clear of the, um, stay clear of the processed foods because mm -hmm. they're not labeled correctly. And even so, if you do feel like you really, really, really need to have the processed foods, guys, five ingredients or less, or, you know, we're Jamaicans, most of us out here, Caribbean people, make your banana chips at home. Right, start to learn to do these things: plant, and, plant and chips, um, sweet potato chips. Throw them in the oven. Right, try to start learning, and that's why, I, as a nutritionist, I love to focus on the culinary aspect of mm -hmm. it. I don't just want to sit here and tell you eat this, take this vitamin. Do I want to talk? That's why I love being in the kitchen. I love to share right. recipes that are great that can really help the body. Uh, mm -hmm. Sometimes all I have is just a big bowl of salad, and the salad has on it just um, everything. Yeah, I put lemon. That's my dressing. You know, we're, you said it before too, Sophia, we're addicted to our taste good and mm -hmm. it's fine, but you that's, let that be like a treat, right? Don't eat that every single day. Don't let that be, even like we're saying, meatless Mondays. Just on mm -hmm. one day, for, for example, just to start, just one day, start out where you're just only vegetables. And I, I'll tell you guys a story <laughs> real quick. When I first married my husband, gonna be 10 years next, next month, our 10 year anniversary is coming up. Um, and I remember he's, he's a yard man, he's, he's Rasta man auntie. That's good. And my husband was like, he cooked one night and it was just um, ground food and and um, cabbage. <laughs> and back then I was like, I wasn't plant-based. I was like, what, what, where's the meat? And he's like, you don't need no meat. And I said, but he's like, the cabbage is the meat. I said, mm -hmm. what kind of foolishness? <laughs> you know, I was so used to. You know, and I'm thin. Yeah. I've always been thin and I appear, you know, healthy and I probably was pretty much healthy for the most part. But at the same time, I was so used to my, you know, big meat and my fish and my oxtail or whatever like that. And he was just like, no. So it was very easy for me to um, when we did decide to go plant based 100 percent, he was on board because he was already sort of living like that. So. Mm -hmm. Start like that, guys. One meal. It's going to be a shock to your system like it was to mine, <laughs> you know, at first, you know, but four years ago was when I made my switch. And I know you're big, big on plant based as well, too, Sophia. I know. Oh, you're, yes. Oh, you're yeah. Big on that. But yeah, the potassium in the fish, but also potassium in all these different things that you have mm -hmm. to look out for. And nobody wants to have to monitor that closely. Everything they're putting in the mouth. Yeah. Right. So it's take note now in terms of the process, but also um, take take other steps exercise and all the other things that you can do um as well um carrie ann johnson what do you recommend to detox the body so we've been saying that 
Sophia, I'll let you take this one if you want to share. I mean, we mentioned the dandelion. That's good. Lots of water. Drinking lots of water prior mm -hmm. to kidney issue is very important. <laughs> it flushes the body. But yeah. you still have to be careful. Maybe add a little bit of lemon in there. Because mm -hmm. you don't want to release everything out your body. So right. I would say lots of water. Mm -hmm. And maybe every um, season try to do a cleanse. Mm -hmm. You know, different herbs that are cleansing. You can do that. Keep everything flowing and moving. Mm -hmm. So water. Yeah. Lots of water. And um, don't underestimate vegetables as a form of detoxing. Mm -hmm. So the colon is, you know, you eat your raw greens and all those um, vegetables um, are really good too to help detox um, the body. So vegetables are also good too. Um, all right. So we have a few more. We're going to wrap up right now. I'm going to have Sophia give her final comments. Um, need potassium for heart health. Yes, you do. You definitely do. And that's why it's such a tricky thing, right? So doc, that's why you have to see your doctor because although we're saying, you know, you have to minimize the amount of potassium, some patients who have kidney issues do still have to take, have to ingest some foods that have potassium in them, mm -hmm. right? Um, but the point is that you are limited. You cannot have as much because the problem is the body um, is not able to, the kidneys rather, it's not able to get rid of to the excess out. potassium. Mm -hmm. Right, that comes in the body, and that's why potassium becomes an issue for the body. Although you need it for your heart, although you need it for all these other functions, right? It's one of the minerals that are essential. So we have a lot of minerals that are essential for our bodies that our body does not make. Potassium is one of them. So we have to ingest it, and because we need it, thank you for pointing that out for our heart, right? It's a, it's like how do you get that then, right? So that's why we're saying it's a system that flows and works well together, and so we don't want to break that system by damaging our organs, right? Um, in this case, as we're talking about the kidney. All right. So we're going to take one or two more questions and we're going to have to go. Um, so what about the meds containing potassium? Okay. So I'm not familiar with that medication. Um, however, you know, I get, I'm not familiar with yeah. water, pill? water pill, Sonia. Um, but we're not familiar with that. And again, that's something you maybe High blood pressure, are you dealing with high blood pressure, Sonia? She has diabetes, I think she had mentioned earlier. Um, but yeah, let us know. Um, at any rate though, when it comes to your medication and if it does have potassium, you should mm -hmm. go out to your doctor just to see um, if that plays a role. That's what we mean, ask questions, right? Um, so let's see what else. We have two more and we, we got to run. Um, what is the best type of water to drink? Plain water. Mm -hmm. <laughs> water. You know, you go to Jamaica and they have the bottle of water. They just say water. <laughs> um, well, I think if you want to throw some lemon in it, to be honest, um, that could help, right? So lemon water would definitely be good. Um, veg uh, if you want to add some vegetables like cucumbers or strawberries. Mm -hmm, um, I'm not specifically sure um, what you mean by what type of water, but I would say just plain, plain regular water with some lemon or whatever. And we have a question. Or maybe distilled or spring. I'm not sure if that's what she's saying. Yeah, is it related to kidney? someone with kidney issues? I guess maybe that could be a question for you if it has to do with someone. Yeah, with still uh, minimal water. You want to get a filtered water and add a little bit of lemon in there. It does help because it breaks things down and get it out your system. Okay. And if you're adding fruits to the water, you want to have um, fruits in terms of like berries or... Yeah, berries of the sort, because that's what you usually put in there. Yeah. You want to make sure they're organic. Okay, that's a good point. That's taking in more toxin on top of toxin. You don't want that. You want to flush. I'm glad that you said that. Yeah, yeah, definitely, guys. Don't If you're able to, especially the dirty dozen, I don't know if you guys are familiar. I'll see if mm -hmm. I can share that. There's some foods that you eat that have the skin on them. If you're eating anything that has the skin, make sure it's organic. If it's right. If you're taking the skin off, you know, it's okay for the most part, but if you're going to eat the skin like strawberries or tomatoes or any of those type of vegetables and fruits that you're eating the skin, um, you want to try to get organic. I know people say mm -hmm. organic expensive, but it's your body. You know, it's your body. Invest in your body. Sophie and I was talking about mm -hmm. that. the best investment you can make is to put the good things in your body. No need for no jewelry and all this other external stuff, right? <laughs> we'll thank you later on and you'll feel so much better. You'll feel so much Thank's better. Good. And a little goes a far way. We're thinking because we were raised with this bulk of food, we don't mm -hmm. need it. No, I agree. I agree. Um, Brian Smith says, why is the government not consulting with holistic doctors to, pub to publicly 
teach people how to boost their immune system to protect themselves from COVID and other virus. Lord have mercy. Right. <laughs> right? Have anyone from the holistic profession not contacted the government about this? People are so conditioned that the only way to deal with illness is to use drugs and vaccine. Listen, we could be here all day with this topic, Brian. We are not going to touch it. <laughs> <laughs> Government do all sorts of things. And it's hard to really speak on why they're not doing the holistic approach. I mean, in my work, in my profession, we have to do politics. We have to learn. And I have a book over here, Food Politics. Brian knows better too, right? <laughs> this is one of my um, books that I, it's a good book to pick up, right? So if you want to understand a little bit more, I love to recommend books, guys. Um, and we do have to get off in a couple of minutes. And I need Sophia to give her wrap up. So this is the only thing, last thing I want to say, and then we got to go. Um, if you really want to learn more about what's going on in government, in food, it really is a big deal. And this is a not, I don't want to say it's famous, but a lot of people who are in my profession or even if they're not doctors, anybody who really want to know about food, they read this book because it really tells you about what's really happening. It's a lot of politics. Um, and, you know, the best thing you can do is educate yourself, learn as much as you can, um, and work with folks who are not trying to sell you medication <laughs> or not trying to sell you, you know, um, supplements and things like that because a lot of people they talk to you about these things but in the end they're trying to sell you some type of supplement mm -hmm. and the goal is to know that you know food is medicine at the end of the day food is medicine so the best foods that you can eat for your body we're going to keep saying it here plant-based right it's plant-based foods it's you know um raw vegetables raw fruits and and that type of thing all right yeah, so thanks you. brian great question we could do a whole show about that right and then we'll have to get some governmental people in here to give their take right <laughs> all right <laughs> That's it. it. Her, I want Sophia to give her final thoughts and share anything else that she'd like to share um, with us before we tune out. This was a lovely show, and um, I'm, I really love the engagement. We had a tough start in the beginning, but we're nonetheless here. So, Miss Sophia, go ahead, take it away. We did it. Thank you guys for your patience earlier on. You know, I'm in Florida, it's really hot. I thought I could have sat outside and did this, but it was not happening. So, <laughs> I apologize for that again. But I just want to say, you know, love yourself. Okay, loving yourself is you, you notice what you're putting in your body. And we only have one body. So let's take care of it. If we need help, let us get help. We're here as a community to yeah. help each other. All right. Getting, um, you know, kidney disease is no fun. I just told you, you're so restricted and so limited. Who wants that? You want to have your freedom where you want to drink as much water or whatever it is you want to drink right but when when the body is compromised you have to limit yourself so let's get the knowledge before do your annual um checkup it doesn't hurt get it done once a year know your numbers so you know where you are mm -hmm. all right and you know we're here to help you guys yeah. and no fun no fun dealing with someone that has to be in a, pay, in, a in a chair for three to four hours three times a week right no fun yeah. depression sets in then more pills again you know, not the way to go. All right. Let's love ourselves. Oh, I can't Thank add anything you. to that. That that's that's brilliant. Thank you so much, Sophia, for sharing that, guys. Mm -hmm. I'm gonna leave on that note. Love yourself, love yourself enough to take care of yourselves. Um, you matter, you really do matter. Mm -hmm. And um, health is really the true wealth. And you know, you guys just take care of yourselves. We are here to help. We'll be back next month with yeah, next month. We're <laughs> next next Monday. I'm not sure what next show is going to be, um, but we're truly grateful for today and for this time. Um, we hope that we've motivated you on this Motivation Monday, on this Meatless Monday, to eat well and to take good care of yourselves. We're going to sign out once again. Thank you so much, Miss Sophia. You'll probably thank see you. her again. Thank you for moment. having me. I oh, of course. It. I enjoyed it. Guys. So we'll we'll probably be seeing her face again. She has some other things going on. So I'm definitely going to be inviting her back. Let us know what you think in the comments. Share this video, like this video, and let everybody know um, that they should definitely um, touch it. All right, they should definitely come on and, <laughs> and enjoy the show. And I have somebody in the background telling me that I should share about my hats, guys. I have hats on my website. I gotta go. I gotta sign out. <laughs> You go check oh, them yeah. out. All right, guys. And also one last plug. I'm teaching mental health first aid on April 10th. 
Um, and I'm looking forward to having you guys join in. There's a few seats left, um, right, Sophia? <laughs> I'm already signed up. Listen, I missed it last time and I'm not missing it again, okay? I know. So you guys, if you don't know, go to my website and sign up um, for the, the, it's an investment again in yourself, but it's, mm -hmm. it's great mental health, it's great. It's a class that I teach and I want you guys to take advantage of that. All right, so on that note, again, we'll see y'all later. What good evening. Thank you guys. All right, bye, take Sophia. Bye. Bye.